This video looks at build diagrams for simple factors. So just to remind you of the overview, we've done what is frequency response and how do I compute this or write down expressions for it. And the current videos are focusing on how do I represent frequency response in a helpful fashion, when particularly graphically. And we're looking here at Bode diagrams with simple factors. Now the previous video showed that MATLAB can be used for forming exact Bode diagrams and also reminded students of core properties of logs. And it's this latter one that we might use more of in this video. However, what's important is that we want students to be able to sketch Bode diagrams because the ability to sketch is core to developing insight and subsequently for use in design. This video is going to begin the process by looking only at very simple processes. So you'll see, we'll look at G of S, just a derivative, or G of S, just an integrator, or G of S, just S plus A, or 1 over S plus A. And we're going to show how you can sketch the boat diagrams for these simple examples. Now, just a reminder of how the Bode diagram is defined. On the horizontal axis, we have log 10 of omega, or alternatively, you can view this as omega on a log axis. And on the vertical axis, we've got 20 log to the base 10 of the gain, which is decibels, or the argument of g of j omega. Let's look at the first example then. So we've got g of s equals s, and you remember the first step is to substitute s equal j omega because we're looking at the frequency response. And we want to sketch the Bode diagrams for this. So the gain Bode diagram, we need 20 log to the base 10 of the modulus of g of j omega against log 10 of omega. So you'll see this gives us 20 log 10 of omega, because the modulus of j omega is just omega, versus log 10 of omega. And hopefully it's obvious to you that what you have here is two things which are the same and therefore the gradient is 20 decibels per decade. We'll show that in more detail when we get to the graph. For the phase plot, we're doing the argument of j omega against log 10 of omega. Now the argument of j omega is just 90 degrees. It's constant. It doesn't depend on the value of omega. It's always going to be 90 degrees, assuming omega is positive. So let's sketch the, these two plots next. What can you see then? If we do the phase plots first, because that's the easiest, you'll see for the phase plot, the phase is always 90, irrespective of the frequency. <coughs> but the game plot, we were going to do 20 log to the base 10 of omega versus log 10 of omega. So first of all, let's look at what log 10 of omega is. So if omega is 10 squared, log 10 of omega is 2. If omega is 10, log 10 of omega is 1. If omega is 1, log 10 of omega is 0. If omega is 10 to the minus 1, log 10 of omega is minus 1. And if omega is 10 to the minus 2, log 10 of omega is minus 2. So there's the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, we did 20 times this. So at 0, 20 times 0 is 0. If we go to 1, 20 times 1 is 20. If we go to 2, which is here, 20 times 2 is 40, which is here. If we go to minus 1, 20 times minus 1 is minus 20, which is here, and so on. So what do you see? You see you get a straight line with a gradient of 20. And we could equally do another value. So just for completeness, let's, for example, take this point here, which corresponds to omega equals 2. So what you'll see is log 10 of omega is approximately 0.3, and that's what you will have there on that scale, roughly 0.3. And this here will be approximately 6. If I bring it across to here, you'll see it's approximately 6. 
So you can show it for other values if you want. You clearly, therefore, for g of s equals s, the game plot straight line slope of 20 going through 0, 0, and the phase plot has always 90 degrees. What about then g of s equals 1 over s? Now we can do this one a lot more quickly now. First of all, we use the rules of logs to write this comes out as minus 20 log to the base 10 of omega versus log 10 of omega. And you'll see this is the same as s apart from we now have a minus sign. Similarly, if we look at the phase, you'll see the argument of 1 over j is equal to minus 90 degrees. So the phase is constant at minus 90 degrees. So let's look at the two plots here then. So again, the phase we'll do first because that's easy. There it is, minus 90 degrees the whole way through. And for the gain, we had a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade, again, going through 0, 0. So that was the value 0, or 0 equals 20 log to the base 10 of 1. So frequency of 1, you're going to get 0. And if you do 20 times that, you also get 0. So there's one point. If we choose, um, let's say, omega equals 10, then 20 log to the base 10 equals 20. But of course, we were doing minus 20 log to the base 10 of 10. So what do you notice? You get minus 20 goes against the frequency of 10. And thereafter, it's really the same as the derivative. You can see that the value is changed by 20 every decade. And you get a straight line with a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade. Let's do a slightly more difficult one then. g of s equals s plus 2. And in this particular case, we need to break the frequency range into a number of different domains. First, let's think what happens when omega is much, much less than 2. Then what we get is 20 log to the base 10 of the modulus of 2 plus j omega is approximately equal to 20 log to the base 10 of 2, which is approximately 6. In other words, it's constant. Similarly, if I do omega greater than 2, then 20 log to the base 10 of 2 plus j omega is approximately equal to 20 log to the base 10 of omega, which is the same as the plot we got for the derivative. In other words, we've got a slope of 20 decibels per decade. And finally, if omega equals 2, I get 20 log to the base 10 of 2 root 2 which is going to give me approximately 9 decibels. What about the phase then? Well, if omega is much, much less than 2, then the argument of 2 plus j omega is approximately equal to the argument of 2, which is 0. If omega is much bigger than 2, then the argument of 2 plus j omega is approximately equal to the argument of j omega, which is 90. And if omega equals 2, then we get 2 plus 2j, and that's going to give you 45 degrees. So let's put this information on the plot. Now, I'm going to do the information that we did on the previous graph, and then we'll look at the exact plots. What we said is for low frequencies, that is for omega less than 2, we started at 6. I'm going to mark here the frequency of 2. So we said you're going to be approximately at 6 until you get to a frequency of 2. If omega was bigger than 2, we said you've got a slope of about 20 decibels per decade. So if I'm going to mark here the point 20, then I can go up to 26. So that's going up at a gradient of 20. And there you go. So that was the two limiting cases. Omega much, much bigger than 2, and omega much, much less than 2. And what we said is there was, at 2 itself, we said the value was actually 9.
decibels. So you'll see we've got a slight correction from those red lines and hence we get the blue curve which approaches the asymptotes down here, approaches the asymptotes up here and has a small correction of 3 decibels in here. What about the phase then? Well for the phase we said for low frequencies you had 0 degrees, for high frequencies you had 90 degrees, at omega equals 2 you had 45 degrees. Now what we should do is add in a couple of other corrections. So what we're going to do is write if omega equals 0 0.2 then the argument of 2 plus j omega is approximately 6 degrees and if omega equals 20 the argument of 2 plus j omega is approximately 84 degrees and you'll see why we need these in a minute. So I'm going to mark this point here, that's at 6, and this point here, that's at 84, and then what we can do is draw a smooth curve between 0 degrees through that cross, through that point, through that cross, and on to the asymptotes. And so you see a classic shape. You see at the particular corner frequency here, which is 2, you get 45 degrees. There it is. At very high frequencies, you get 90 degrees. At very low frequencies, you get 0 degrees. And you can put a correction point, which is one decade away. At one decade away, you see you had 6 degrees. And one decade this way, you see you got 84 degrees. So you've got some very simple approximations to give you a rough idea of what the sketch is doing. And you'll notice, in summary, for s plus 2, the gain starts constant, and then after the corner frequency, it goes up at 20 decibels per decade. For the phase, it starts at 0 degrees. As you approach the corner frequency, you get close to 45 degrees. As you go well above the corner frequency, you go to 90 degrees. What about then a factor in the denominator? And this is going to be very similar. So first of all, if omega is far, far less than 4, I can write this as approximately as minus 20 log to the base 10 of 4. And that's going to be approximately minus 12. If omega is far, far bigger than 4, I can write minus 20 log to the base 10 of omega, which gives me a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade. And if omega equals 4, I can write minus 20 log to the base 10 of 4 root 2, which is going to be approximately minus 15 decibels. What about the phase? If omega is far less than 4, then I'm going to get approximately the argument of 1 over 4, which is 0. If omega is far bigger than 4, I'm going to get approximately the argument of 1 over j omega, which is minus 90. And if omega equals 4, I'll get the argument of 1 over 4 plus 4j, which is minus 45. And I can, of course, do omega equals 0.4. And you'll find you get minus 6, and omega equals 40, and you'll get minus 84 degrees. So if you step a decade away from the corner frequency, you'll tend to get these values of 6 and 84. So again, if we put this information on, you'll see we started at minus 12 for low frequencies. We were approximately constant until we got to a frequency of 4, and then we have a slope, so my sketch isn't perfect, of minus 20 decibels per decade, and you have a correction which sends you through minus 15 decibels, because you'll remember that the correction at the corner frequency was 3. What about the phase plot? Again, you'll see we've got minus 45 at omega equals 4. We've got 0, sorry, at low frequencies. We've got minus 90 at high frequencies. And a decade off, so there's a decade, we've got minus 6. And a decade in the other way, which is here, 
we've got minus 84. And so you can now draw a smooth curve between those asymptotes and those crosses. So for something like 1 over s plus 4, you see the gain is flat for low frequencies. That's around here. And then you've got a roll off at high frequencies, minus 20 decibels per decade. The phase is low for low frequencies towards zero. As you get to the corner frequency, you get minus 45. And then for high frequencies, you go towards minus 90. So in summary, these are the sorts of values you need to be aware of. If you take a simple factor, s plus a, if omega is less than a over 10, then the argument is roughly zero. If omega equals a over 10, so that's a decade off the corner frequency, the argument is approximately 6. If omega equals a, the argument's 45. If omega's 10a, the argument's approximately 84. And if omega's bigger than 10a, the argument is approximately 90. Now, there are other approximations you might see in the books, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter uh, which approximation you use as long as it's quick and simple, because we're doing sketching, not plotting. Now, for the gain, the sorts of approximations we've used, we said if omega is less than a, then you've got roughly a constant. You just pretend g is equal to a, so you've got 20 log to the base 10 of a. If omega equals a, then the modulus of g is now a root 2, and you'll see you get this correction of 3 decibels. And if omega is bigger than a, you get approximately g equals omega, or 20 log to the base 10 of omega, so your slope of 20 decibels per decade. In a similar way, if you had something like g equals 1 over s plus a, you'll see it's the same approximations, except the phases come negative. Minus 6 for a over 10, minus 45 for a, minus 84 for 10a, minus 90 for greater than 10a. And similarly, for the gain, g is approximately 1 over a for small frequency, or minus 20 log to the base 10 of a. At the corner frequency, you get a correction of 3, but this time it's a minus 3. And similarly, for large frequencies, you've now got a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade. So in conclusions, this video has presented bow diagrams for simple factors and shown that you can get an accurate sketch using some simple observations. For the game plot, we plot two asymptotes, that's low frequency and high frequency, join the two together, and then apply a correction at the corner frequency, which is normally of the order of 3 dB. For the phase plot, we can also do two asymptotes, two asymptotes, low and high frequency, but in this case, it might be useful to apply three corrections, not only at the corner frequency, but also a decade above M.